seated. Brother Ryan's going to come minister the word of the Lord to us this morning. Tonight I would like to speak to the church on Messiah misunderstood, revelation needed. Okay? There's something the Lord put in my heart I want to share with you. Messiah misunderstood, revelation needed. I'm looking forward to hearing the word of the Lord this morning, Brother Ryan. Praise the Lord, everybody. Um, can you hear me? There we go. That's what we needed. Well, you're glad for central heat this morning. Man, it went from one to zero on my drive here. What's up with that? I woke up and picked up my phone because, you know, what did we do before we had phones in our hand? It was minus two with a wind chill of minus 18, and then it went to minus three with a wind chill of minus 21, and I said in my heart, I hate Ohio, and all of her winter, <sighs> heavens. Well, I'm glad it's warm in church, though, and uh, I, 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 have, I have something for you this morning. <laughs> like, well, that would be nice. So Exodus chapter 14, if I spill water down my chin, because I'm a pro. Sorry, Daniel, I didn't give these to you. Exodus 14 and 13. You should always give the video guy your verses before you get up here. Well, and it goes like this. It says, and Moses said to the people, do not be afraid. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord which he will accomplish for you today. For the Egyptians, whom you see today, you will see no more again. The Lord will fight for you, and you shall hold your peace. And the Lord said to Moses, why do you cry to me? You ever feel like the Lord's going, what are you crying to me for? That's a whole other sermon. Tell the children of Israel to go forward, but lift up your rod, and stretch out your hand over the sea and divide it. And the children of Israel shall go on dry ground through the midst of the sea. Now go to Joshua chapter 3 and verse number 7. There we go. And the Lord said to Joshua, This day I will begin to exalt you in the sight of all Israel, that they may know that as I was with Moses, so I will be with you. You shall command the priests who bear the Ark of the Covenant, saying, When you have come to the edge of the water of Jordan, you shall stand in the Jordan. Jump down to verse 12, Daniel, if you would. Now therefore, take for yourselves twelve men from the tribes of Israel, one man from each tribe, and it shall come to pass, as soon as the soles of the feet of the priests who bear the Ark of the Lord, the Lord of all the earth, shall rest in the waters of the Jordan, that the waters of the Jordan shall be cut off, and water, and the waters that come from the upstream, they shall stand in a heap. And let me talk to you a little bit this morning on this subject. Put it up there. Sometimes you have to get your feet wet. Sometimes you have to get your feet wet. Sometimes God will do it in advance, but sometimes you've got to step in the water. Let's pray. Jesus, we need you this morning. Move, Heavenly Father, in this place. Lord, we need you more than anything. God, I ask that you touch us. Help us to receive from your word. Help us, Lord, to receive that which you've given to me. I ask that we'd move here in this place changed and edified by your word. Jesus, we ask this all in your name. Everyone said amen. Shake hands with three people. Have a seat. We won't be long. to put a chill up fine imagine you're doing this today this is stock photo art not taken from today because that would be cold praise god the day was april 23rd 28th rather 2013 and somebody was playing cut the rope angry birds whatever 
So April 28, 2013, you guys don't remember that date. I do. It was the first time I came back up here from a 600-day break. Since that time, it's been 659 days. Aren't you glad Google does those calculations for you? I did not sit at a calendar and go, one, two. And this is the last time I'm scheduled to preach here. It's true. If you haven't heard, we're starting a church in Johnstown. And so I'll be preaching there. <laughs> so that's almost two years of you folks listening to me. So thank you. And for those of you who got to catch up on your sleep, you're welcome. So we're off on a new adventure. And uh, Crossroads, we had our first service two weeks ago. And our next service is next week. And uh, I'm glad to be with you this morning, but I can't wait to be there next week. I just can't. Um, I'll, I'll share with you a couple of things. Um, because this isn't quite a recruiting sermon, but maybe a little bit. Um, the building we have our services at is the American Legion Community Center in Johnstown. Johnstown has about 5,000 people in it, so it's not huge. So if you can find a building, talk to other church planners, that's the biggest struggle they have, finding somewhere to have services. We were the first people to ask to use this building, and I have, we have connections in the Bible that we've been teaching since July who are well known in, in the community, so that got me an in with this group. Um, so we went there two weeks ago on the first. We had our first service. The guy was super nice. Asked lots of questions about the church. Asked, uh, and and he said, um, he said, are you interested in this building long term? Why, yes. Yes, I am. And he said, uh, there were two other churches that called, but you were first. And so I'll give you dibs. Great. Normally, there is a $100 deposit for every day you want to reserve. So I reserve dates through September 27th, because I got faith, right? That's 36 dates, which means I was looking at coming to the bishop and asking for a check for $3,600 to hold those dates. I don't have that much faith. But the guy who handles the, the rental said, ah, you're good. He said, well, just roll your 100 bucks every week. So I hold it for $100, not $3,600. And uh, so I'm thrilled about that. So you should be thrilled about that because we're going as an extension of this church. And so here's, so as we're working in this, Here's what I've learned. Sometimes God will tell us, you've been in your current season of ministry long enough, and it's time for you to move on. All right? I'm reading a book now called Necessary Endings. Okay? Let me, let me put this very fine point on this. Sometimes it's time to move on. It is so important that you move on well. And don't burn the bridge behind you, because you may have to walk over it again. I speak from first-hand experience. So when you leave, leave well. I've had more conversations about Johnstown with the bishop, because when I go there, he's still my pastor. Because if you think just because you go away you don't need a pastor, you're wrong. You need to be accountable to somebody. And that's the truth. So God tells us sometimes it's time to move on. And when you move on, you've got to do it right. God will move you along, but you've got to do it right. And every experience is different. God brings Israel uh, out of Egypt into a season of consecration with him. In Exodus chapter 6 and verse 5, the 
Lord speaks to Moses and he says, I have heard the groaning of the children of Israel, whom the Egyptians keep in bondage. And I have remembered my covenant. Therefore say to the children of Israel, I am the Lord. I will bring you out from under the burdens of the Egyptians. I will rescue you from their bondage. And I will redeem you with an outstretched arm and with great judgments. I will take you as my people and I will be your God. Then you shall know that I am the Lord your God who brings you out from under the burden of the Egyptians. And he lays this promise on him. He says, I will bring you into the land which I swore to give to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And I will give it to you as a heritage. I am the Lord. This promise sat dormant for 430 years. But in God's time, God said, I am going to give you this land that I promised you. If God tells you he's going to give you something, don't give up on it just because it has to season for a bit. God will do what he says he's going to do. So they come to this season, and God delivers them uh, out of Egypt. And my favorite part is one we don't concentrate on a whole lot. I mean, we love to talk about the plagues, right? I mean, you wouldn't want to go through them. I don't like frogs any more than the next person. Or flies, or lice, or burning fire stuff. Technical term. So not only are they delivered from Egypt, right? But they loot Egypt on the way out. Exodus chapter 12, verse 35 says, Now the children of Israel had done according to the word of Moses, and they had asked the Egyptians articles of silver, articles of gold, and clothing, and the Lord had given the people fa favor in the sight of the Egyptians, so that they granted them what they requested. Thus they plundered the Egyptians. Plundered is a nice word for looted. They cleaned them out. They borrowed everything from their Egyptian neighbors with no intent to return it. Some of y'all have neighbors like that. Some of y'all are that neighbor. Just saying. Half of my dad's garage is in my garage. He's in Florida, so I don't care if I tell you this. And if he watches this, he's going to come to my garage when he comes back. <laughs> so this was more, though, than just them getting reparations from their captors. In the process of looting or plundering Egypt, God wanted to provide everything they needed for where to get them to the next place God had for them. Think about this. So they're in captivity for 430 years. They leave Egypt. Pharaoh has second thoughts about this plan. And he takes his whole army after them. Now Egypt is having, sec or Israel is having second thoughts about this plan. Because all of Egypt's after them. But God makes a way for them to get away from Egypt without doing anything. We read in our text, he says, he says, you're going to see your salvation today. He says in Exodus 14. For the Egyptians who you see today, you're not going to see any more. The Lord will fight for you. God says, I'm going to do all the work. And you're going to hold your peace. And the Lord said to Moses, why do you cry to me? Tell the children of Israel to go forward, but lift up your rod. Stretch out your hand over the sea and divide it. And the children of Israel shall go through on dry ground in the midst of the sea. God basically tells them, stand back and watch this. I'm going to do something incredible for you. And he brings them through the Red Sea without them doing anything. Sometimes God will do all the heavy lifting. And that's a great season. And he brings them into this new period in the wilderness of ministry and uh, intimacy with him. Because think about how the, or the Israelites went to Egypt. In Genesis chapter 47 and verse 3, then Pharaoh said to uh, Joseph's brothers, what is your occupation? And they said to Pharaoh, your servants are shepherds. 
both we and our fathers. When they went into Egypt, shepherding was all they knew how to do. They had flocks, they had lots of flocks, but that's what they did, which is kind of a one-dimensional career. Now they've been captive for 430 years. But while they're captive, they learn everything they need to know. Don't despise the lessons in your trial. God will equip you in the midst of the trial you're going through to take you into your next season of ministry. Don't say, why am I stuck in this trial? Why am I, I hate this trial, I hate this trial. But try to learn from what you're going through. God doesn't try us because he's evil. He, he tries us and tests us so we learn. So he, we can be equipped. In Exodus chapter 25, right, they've come out. And it says, the Lord spoke to Moses saying, speak to the children of Israel that they bring me an offering. From everyone who gives it willingly with his heart, you shall take my offering. And this is the offering which you shall take from them. Gold, silver, and bronze, blue, purple, and scarlet thread, fine linen and goat's hair, ram skins dyed red, badger skins and acacia wood, oil for the light and spices for the anointing oil, and for the sweet incense, onyx stones and stones be set in the ephod and in the breastplate. Think about that list, gold, silver, bronze, blue, purple, scarlet thread, fine linen, goat's hair, dyed rams and badger skin, uh, acacia wood, oil, spices, incense, precious stones. None of those are things that a shepherd would know how to work with. But they had time in their captivity to learn how to use these things so that when God brought them into this new season, to minister, uh, to, to grow close to him in this new season of ministry. They learned in their captivity and said, now we know how to work with all this stuff. Because we're not just shepherds anymore, but we spent time in Egypt. We spent time getting tested. And while we were in our test, we learned some things. And we can build God's tabernacle now. Something to give glory to him. The thing they learned in their trial eventually allowed them to give glory to God. Don't despise the lessons God's teaching you in your trial because they'll take you to your next season of ministry. So they move on to a new season after all this time in the wilderness, right? 40 years. And while they're in this season of ministry, they're learning even more tools. God's not content to leave you static. He wants you to move forward and grow into the next ministry he has for you. God never intended for you to uh, stay still. But you should always be growing. So we read in Numbers that Israel's learning new skills. Think about it. Numbers chapter 21 and verse 1 says, The king of Arad, the Canaanite, no relation to Canaan, Canaan, um, who dwelt in the south, heard that Israel was coming on the road to Antherim. Then he fought against Israel and took some of them prisoners. So Israel made a vow to the Lord and said, If you will indeed deliver this people into my hand, then I will utterly destroy their cities. And the Lord listened to the voice of Israel and delivered up the Canaanites, and they utterly destroyed them and their cities. So the name of that place was called Hormah. Up to this point, if you're reading the law, if you're reading Exodus and into Numbers, it's all laws and tabernacles. Laws and tabernacles. And do's and don'ts and building stuff. But now God's decided Israel needs to learn a new skill for what they're about to do. What they need to learn how to do is fight. When they were slaves, they learned trades. Before they were slaves, they were shepherds. But then they became slaves. And while you learn all kinds of trades while you're a slave, well, the one thing you most certainly don't learn to do while you're a slave is how to fight. 
And God said, I'm going to take you into this new land, but if you're going to go there, you've got to know how to fight. And so we see in these latter books of the law where Israel is learning how to fight against everybody who opposes them. And they're learning how to come into, uh, uh, learning how to go to war. Now God tells them to move again, but he says this time's going to be a little different. Joshua chapter 1 and verse 1. It says, after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass, the Lord spoke to Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' assistant, and said, Moses, my servant is dead. Now therefore arise, go over this Jordan, you and all this people, to the land which I am giving to them, the children of Israel, every place that the sole of your foot will tread upon, I have given you, as I said to Moses, from the wilderness and this Lebanon as far as the great river, the river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites, and to the great sea towards the going down of the sun shall be your territory. No man shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will not leave you nor forsake you. Remember, even when God tells you to move, he's going to go with you. So he starts out and he tells Joshua, Moses, my servant, is dead. Well, that puts a pretty fine point on it, doesn't it? But now you've got to move on. Don't fall in love so much with where you're at that you're not open to move on to where God wants you to go. He says, be open to going or to going. And I will be with you as I was with Moses. So don't fear the growth because it means God's going to go with you. So God tells him to cross over into a new place. But God isn't going to part the waters in advance this time like he did when they left Egypt. We read earlier in the book of Joshua chapter 3, it said the Lord told Joshua, this day I will begin to exalt you in the sight of all Israel, that they may know that as I was with Moses, I will be with you. You shall command the priests who bear the Ark of the Covenant, saying, when you have come to the edge of the water of Jordan, you shall stand in the, uh, in the river. Now therefore, take for yourselves twelve men from the tribe of Israel, one man for every tribe, and it shall come to pass as soon as the soles of their feet or the souls of the priests which bear the ark of the Lord, the Lord of all the earth, shall rest in the waters of the Jordan, that the waters of the Jordan shall be cut off. The waters that come from upstream, they shall stand in a heap. God says to them, this time you're going to have to get your feet wet, and then I'll cut off the water. Last time I did all the work for you, but this time you need to move in faith. You need to take the first step. In this case, literally. Sometimes in our cases, literally. Nobody called us and said, we've got a great building. Why don't you come have church? We had Bible study in a dining room for seven months. And then somebody said, why don't we have church? And I said, that's a great idea. Why don't we have church? Brother Man's been trying to reach his family for years and years and years. They didn't want to come to a church, but they'd have a Bible study in their house. And after six months of Bible study, they said, we should have a church. Brother Man looked at us, Brother Man and I looked at each other and said, that's a fine idea. Wish I'd have thought of that. These folks are the best ambassadors for Crossroads in the world. I talked, well, man, I didn't even tell you that. I talked to Kathy on the phone the other day. She said, she said, I called my friend. She said, what kind of church is it? She said, we're Pentecostal. And she said, well, I don't have a skirt. She said, that's okay, I don't wear a skirt. And Brandy doesn't wear a skirt. She said, what's their dress code? She said, they want you to wear clothes. We're pretty firm on that, by the way. I said, our dress code is yes, please. If you'd wear clothes, that'd be great. Because I don't really care when brand new people are coming into the church. I don't really care. I want them to hear about Jesus Christ. And then Jesus will take care of the rest of that stuff. 
She said, you've never been to a church like this before. I was feeling pretty good about myself then. She said, we're talking right now about the stuff we believe. And that was the key. The stuff we believe. Not the stuff that Donnie and Don and Teresa and Charity believe and that they brought here to Johnstown. We're talking about the stuff we believe in our church, in Johnstown, that I thought was a great idea. Because they've moved on to that mission. And now they're like, we need to reach people. I got family who would love this church. And God just told me, get your feet wet and I'll part the water. One more thing, and then I'm done. The saying goes, there's no free lunch. Joshua chapter 5, verse 1 says this. So it was when all the kings of the Amorites were on the west side of the Jordan, and all the kings of the Canaanites who were by the sea, heard that the Lord had dried up the waters of Jordan from before the children of Israel until they had crossed over, their hearts melted. That's what I thought. And there was no spirit left in them because of the children of Israel. When they saw what God had done for them, they said, this is the real deal. And the God they serve is the real deal. But they never would have felt that way if somebody hadn't stepped in the water first. Now, verse 2 says, At that time the Lord said to Joshua, Make flint knives for yourselves and circumcise the sons of Israel again a second time. He said, this whole group that's come out of the wilderness came across the Red Sea on mom and dad's dedication. He said, you're going over the Jordan now, but you need your own covenant, and you need your own commitment, and you need your own consecration. Mom and dad may have gotten you through the Red Sea, but I'm getting ready to do something greater with you. But before any of that can happen, you got to find your own place of commitment and your own place of consecration. I can't take the bishop with me to Johnstown. But I can take everything I learned and I can add my own consecration and my own dedication and bring that with me. The kings of Canaan were scared to death. But Joshua said, folks, we've got to have this relationship for ourselves. Moses is dead. And everybody who came through the Red Sea is dead. And this is a whole different group that's going to go forward and do a whole new thing. And we've got to have our own relationship with God. For God to bless it. Both of the stories we read start in Genesis chapter 12. And it goes like this Genesis 12 and 1 says, Now the Lord said to Abram, Get out of your country, from your family, and from your father's house to a land I will show you. And I will make you a great nation. I will bless you and make your name great. And you shall be a blessing. And I will bless those that bless you, and I will curse him who curses you. And in all the families of the earth shall be blessed. The Lord makes Abram three promises. He says, I'm going to make you a great nation. I'm going to bless you. And I'm going to make your name great. But you've got to move. It'll never happen if you stay where you're at may not be comfortable. In fact, it probably won't be. But it'll be worth it. 
One last bit of verses. Matthew chapter 4, verse 18. Jesus, walking by the Sea of Galilee, saw two brothers. Simon called Peter and Andrew his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. Then he said to them, Follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. They immediately left their nets and followed him. Going on from there, he saw two other brothers, James, the son of Zebedee, and John, his brother, in the boat with Zebedee, their father, mending their nets. And he called to them, and immediately they left the boat and their father, and they followed him. Four men, two sets of brothers, all businessmen, all comfortable in what they were doing. They could have stayed fishermen, and they could have told Jesus no, but they would have missed out on everything. They answered the call, and the rest is history. I think God's going to do great things in Johnstown. But someone had answered the call. So I'm going. Charity's going. The mans are coming with us. The Johnsons are helping us out with our preview services. And if you think God wants you to help, talk to the bishop. Is that diplomatic enough, sir? Yes, sir. It's my last time. I don't need to get in trouble on my last time. 600 days was a really long time. But God, if it's Johnstown, great. You know what Brother LJ said when he preached last week? The emails we sent back and forth, he said I was going to make a folder called Crossroads. And then he made a subfolder and he said, Preaching Points and Daughter Works. He said, Because Crossroads is going to be the first of many. I may be the first one out. One of you may be next. Who's going to go and evangelize? Stand with me, if you will. God did not say it would be easy. But he did say he'd go with us. That's all I need. And that's all you need. So if we can come as a church family this morning, let's pray and ask God to use us and uh, wherever our season of ministry is. And again, think about John. So let's come and ask God, use me, use me in whatever capacity, use me, God. Let's say. Lead me, Lord, I will follow. Lead me, Lord.
us into me. Direct us as a church. Lead us, God. I will come. We need you, Lord. You have called me. I will answer. Lead me, Lord. I will go. Father, we love you today. I thank you, Lord, for your presence. I thank you for your word. And I thank you for your will. God, it's our desire to follow the mind and the will of God. Lord, we ask that every heart today can be opened, every spirit, God, receptive, every, every mind, Lord, prepared to receive anything that you'd say, all that you'd do in our lives. I pray, God, for this, this congregation, for these youngins that have come to this altar. I pray that something, God, communicated in the spirit gets birthed in their heart I believe you Lord to keep your hand upon us as we travel home and come back tonight allow us God to come with hungry thirsting spirits we ask it in Jesus name Amen. thank you for coming up and praying with these young thank you for being here on this inclement Sunday morning Amen.